Hi, this is Celeste from CreatrixRealms.com and today I'm going to show you how to create a custom email campaign template on your Adobe Business Catalyst so that you can use this over and over again for future campaigns. So first I'm going to start off by showing you a request I received from a client um, asking to turn this into an actual email blast. Um, the way it was set up, um, this one wouldn't work very well because these are actual images. It's not text. As you can see, I pull this off and it shows an image as opposed to this where I can highlight it. If um, someone has their website or their email set up to not receive images, then they wouldn't even get this information. All they would see is this. So that's a, a problem at the moment. Um, so let me go ahead and close that out. And this is the site that I created for my client. And what I'd like to do as far as a marketing strategy is keep everything similar looking. So I'm going to use some elements from the site um, so that's just uh, coherent all the way through. So I'm close this out. Um, so right now to show you how I got here, it's in a dashboard. If you, this will be the first page that loads up on your Adobe Business Catalyst. And I would go into Site Manager, Page Templates. And I did a test run one, um, so I'm going to create a new one to show you how I did it. We'll call this custom email campaign. And we'll just go ahead and save draft. <clears throat> so this takes a little bit of uh, HTML coding. <clears throat> and so hopefully this, this tutorial will get you a little familiar with that. Um, so basically what I want to do is uh, set it up to look more. I'll show you the one that I'm going to set up. That was the test I sent to myself. One second here. It's going to look like this uh, at the very end. Um, so let me walk you through that. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the original background. So I'm just going to, this basically gives you an option to set up tables. And I just need one for this background. So I have it set right there. And you can see that you're in the tables when you see this information down here below. And the email I want to keep fairly, fairly, sorry, just made that word, fairly um, small on the width. So it shows up on um, smartphones too well. So the width I'm going to put to 625. And I want to add an image. Um, so Basically what you do is, since I'm clicked in here, and you can see the properties down here, so you click on Cell Properties, and I've already uploaded images into the um, folders on the server, so you want to do that too before you go through this. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my um, image here, and as you can see I have it under Assets, Images, I created an Email Campaigns folder to keep everything organized. Background, and it's called background image. There it is, it's something that tiles up. I hit insert, and this is 625 pixels. Leave everything else blank, and hit OK, and there is the first part. So go ahead and save. I'm gonna save often, I've just, it's been a rule of thumb as a designer to just save everything often. So now I'm going to add some more information on this. Um, let's see here. Actually, I probably want to do some. Oh, that's good right there. So now I got to build the inside of the email, which is going to look like this. So I'm going to have to create a table up here that has a few tables for this information. So I'll walk you through that. So here's the first top table. I'm just going to put one. In there. Let's see if it takes it. Sometimes it's a little slow. Let's go and click on something else. Sometimes my internet slows down when I'm doing quick time to record this, so please forgive me on that one. Yeah. I kicked me back, sorry, the uh, QuickTime viewer does this. I'm 
Okay, there it is again. Okay, I didn't take that last one, so let me go ahead and put that back in here. There we go, there's one. I think it took it, yeah. It's kind of hard to tell with the background, but right when I clicked on it, all the other information went away, um, so it's not looking at this outer table. So I'm going to let this know that the header needs to also be 625. And that would take it out to that size. Um, I'm gonna do self properties and stick the background image in there, which is that header. Oops, looks like it's still in the original. I'm sorry, one second. I can see it right there. Um, so properties. Okay. Track on image, then I have table header icon. You can see right here, I have a dimension of 625 to 124. So I'll put insert, and I'll put 124 here. And there's that. So we'll save that as a draft. Um, as you notice, it does have a repeat down here, so I want to get rid of that. This is where a little bit of coding comes in. Um, so if you click between design and HTML, you will see right here, we can actually see the code. Now right here shows the image that's showing there. So what I want to do is tell it not to do um, a background repeat. So I save that text here. This is HTML coding for that. So I'm going to stick that right here to have background repeat, no repeat. And let's remove this. That's just a weird break. And save draft. And there we go. There's no repeat there. So we'll save as draft and preview. And that's the first part so far. Let me close this one out. Now I want to get this further up on the left hand side. So what I'm going to do is since I'm located in this table, you can see 625 by 124. I'm going to tell it to align top center. Preview. Oh, didn't take it. One second. There we go. There. So you had to go to the far left. <clears throat> it looks like if you're in the center there, you just click on your left arrow button and you see it goes to the left of it. And then you can center this whole thing, or sorry, put it at the top center right here. And let's preview that. Sometimes you gotta refresh. So let me save draft. And sometimes I have to clear the browsing data just to make sure, because it's grabbing old information. And we'll preview. And there it is, the top. Okay, um, let's see, for the next thing I'm going to do is I want to add a little bit of space around this. So I'm going to give the outer shell some padding. Um, so it looks like I'm on the, the outer one. Usually if you click your arrows left to right, you can see um, now I'm completely out of the table. So I don't want to click right and I'm back to this background image. So let's go to cell property. And I'm going to give this about 20 on the padding. We'll see how it looks. It gave a little bit of space. That's good enough. So I'll take that one. Okay, and since the YouTube videos have to be within 10 minutes, I'm going to have to do an intermission here and do part two of this tutorial.